Hello, my name is Father Kevin O'Neill, and I am speaking to you from San Alfonso Retreat House in Long Branch, New Jersey. And today is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'd like to begin our reflection by reading the opening prayer for today's liturgy. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And our gospel passage for this Sunday comes from the Gospel of St. Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because his destination was a journey to Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? And Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what he left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier this month, Father Michael Himes passed away. He was professor at Boston College for nearly 30 years an eloquent teacher, preacher, and lecturer. Tributes to him speak of the deep impact that he had on students, on colleagues, and on those who heard him preach. He will be remembered in particular for a tool that he developed to discern one's vocation, what he called three key questions. Those questions are, what brings you joy? What are you good at? And who does the world need you to be? What brings you joy? What are you good at? And who does the world need you to be? Today's readings, I believe, touch on the theme of vocation or calling. And I think that Father Himes' questions could be helpful for our reflection. In the first reading, we hear of the call of the prophet Elisha by the prophet Elijah. Elisha is working in a field, plowing the field with 12 oxen, and Elijah comes and calls him. And Elisha first kills the oxen so as to provide food for those who will be left behind, and then he goes to follow Elijah. He follows the call of the Lord and becomes a prophet like Elijah, calling the Israelites to authentic worship, to turn from the worship of false idols, and to follow the path of the God of life and love. The backdrop for today's events and sayings in the Gospel is Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. In St. Luke's Gospel, that journey to Jerusalem is Jesus following his vocation. We know from St. John that God sent his son out of love for the world. And Jesus' vocation was to come and to show us the way of life and love. And in doing so, he offered his life so that we might be reconciled to the Father and to one another. And while we might understandably think of vocation 
and rightly so, think of it as a vocation to married life or to single life, or perhaps as a religious priest, brother, or a priest. I think that St. Paul and the person of Jesus point us to a more basic vocation, one which guides the more specific answers to the question, what gives you joy? What are you good at? And who does the world need you to be? And the more fundamental vocation, I think, comes to us in words from St. Paul to the Galatians in today's second reading. St. Paul says, For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Recall Jesus' command, love one another as I have loved you. The vocation is not a vocation to freedom in itself, but a vocation to use our freedom to serve one another through love, to love as Jesus did. St. Paul cautions us against using freedom, quote, as an opportunity for the flesh, often interpreted as something sexual. But the flesh, as St. Paul talks about it, is really the opposite of serving one another in love. Rather, it is self-absorption rather than self-gift. Being and living all wrapped up in ourselves rather than with a compassionate eye to the needs of others. The abuse of freedom may include sexual sins, but it is a far greater admonition and a call to love, to love and to serve others. So how do we use our freedom? To serve others or to serve ourselves in a selfish way? So the broadest understanding of vocation is to experience joy in loving and serving others to be good at loving and serving others, and to find those people in our lives whose need is that we love and serve them. What gives you joy? What are you good at? Who does the world need you to be? A couple of years ago, I came across a beautiful story of a young boy by the name of Jaden Hayes. When Jaden was four years old, his father died, and his mother died shortly thereafter. At one point in the midst of his own grief, he said that he was, quote, tired of seeing everyone sad all the time, and he set out to do something about it. He asked his guardian to buy small toys, little rubber duckies and dinosaurs, and then with his guardian, he went to downtown Savannah and gave these toys out to people. He said, I'm trying to make people smile. He says it in a beautiful Southern drawl. And he did, probably more than he expected. He says, I'm still sad that my mom died. But even in his grief, he went out to serve and to love others. He says that when he grows up, he wants to be a famous baseball player and a famous basketball player. And he may well be. But at a young age, he has an understanding of living in freedom as serving and loving others. He understands what Pope St. John Paul spoke of as the meaning of life, of giving and receiving love. That's our vocation as disciples of Jesus Christ. A little over a week from today, we as a nation in the United States will celebrate Independence Day. It is a day when we celebrate our freedom, our independence from foreign rule. It is a celebration of our being free from something, from foreign rule. But more importantly, as St. Paul says, is what we are free for. What do we use our freedom for? To serve one another in love. Freedom that focuses only on oneself 
on one's own rights to the neglect of others, to ego self, that's not freedom. For St. Paul, that is slavery. Freedom that seeks to serve others in love is authentic freedom. In today's gospel, Jesus offers an image of following him in the way of love. It's not one that I think many of us would be familiar with. He says, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. It is a call to follow him in his way of love, without detours, without turning back, without veering from the path. So what gives you joy? What are you good at? Who does the world need you to be? Whatever particular road we choose, whether married life, whether single life, whether religious priest, brother, sister, whether a nurse, a teacher, an engineer, a baseball player, or a basketball player, may we be graced and have the courage to live in freedom, to serve one another in love, and in so doing to build up the kingdom of God. And we'll close with the final prayer from today's liturgy. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we thank you for joining the Redemptorist online preaching. We hope you will join us again next Wednesday, June the 29th, when Deacon Royce Thomas will be preaching. God bless you.